Kyle. You know, a typical analogy for these Prepare two would be David versus Goliath. But uh, given recent events, maybe it's a little bit more the Greeks versus Xerxes, in which a god king has already been shown that it can indeed bleed, Kyle. Mm, indeed, but, you know, the Spartans lose yeah. at the end of that movie. Yeah, they do. And, well, <laughs> take up that what you will. <laughs> we'll see what happens to help Bear Smashers here. As, uh, they are obviously clear underdogs Bye. coming in from the lower division they did really well there can they take it to the undefeated team of last season obviously they have already been defeated by enigma but that's kind of I, a different story right i actually think that makes it even harder for for, for the smashers here they get the angry secret mm. uh, puppy sitting back ordering their destruction and i'm thinking it's a closer matchup than you know the storyline would state but i am concerned that they chose to go for this very timid lineup you know brian said the secret draft was greedy it's gonna scale super well how about smashers how are you gonna push the tempo with the medusa quap duo core well would you feel that, was hot. that it's less timid if they are Burns. gonna be banking on like a divine rapier timing if they're like, we're going to reach a peak, we're going to pick up the two, three item Medusa, have a divine rapier, pick up an Aegis and go. I would say yes, but I would still be concerned. Uh, Mag Jug has been one of the best one, two punches throughout most of Dota history. Like, EG used this way back in the day when Arteezy and PPD were playing together. OG used this in multiple majors. I'm sure we'll see them pick it again this season now that Ana's back. And Medusa, look at the 3-4-5 of Hellraiser Smashers. That's my biggest concern. Lena tanking Tusk. These heroes, you know, don't really output too much damage. Yeah. And it's very reliant on, you know, killing that initial target. But you have so much counter-initiation potential on Secret. Uh, you're definitely going to have a BKB at some point on both Nisha. And uh, then it's, of course, built into the Jug. But uh, we'll see. Storm's from oh, takes a lot. Beastmaster's so insane. Yeah, the, the way they angled that creep aggro where Beastmaster was able to kind of function as a wall between the Quap and the range creep and get some good damage on him it was a cute little play. And he certainly needs things like that as Quap is known to be able to tear apart mid melee heroes. Of course, Beastmaster is just not the yeah. normal mid melee hero. Is he? he got buff, you know, we removed Necrobook, but made the hero strong. That's why you see it push to the mid lane. Obviously the ax builds a big part of that, but the base stats are pretty absurd. 63 damage, level two, three base armor. You feel very good, and you in fact, you cannot get denied if you're trying to hit the same creep as a Quap. Yeah, I mean, look at Nisha. 63 base damage, and he's taken advantage of it. Yeah. He denies already. Oh. And, of course, free bottle. So, free runes, rather. Yeah. So, you just, uh, you, you're guaranteed to get a rune in 20 seconds as Nisha. It means to be full HP, and you just start spamming even more axes. Uh, top lane, I think, is the one to really key in on, though. You can see already out to a quick lead is Rasmus, but this, this is a very much a kill lane. This goes way back. Oh, nice skewer back. Tofu's in some trouble here, and uh, maybe he'll survive, but takes a hefty amount of damage for it. Yeah, this is a lane that you got to figure the Smashers will win. Double melee against Adusa. It's pretty damn easy to land good snakes, and you'll look to see him do it on Archer for both CS and Harass damage. Now, this is something that um, in lane, it may not feel good, but in overall game sense, it's good versus the Medusa, right? You talked about how they're going to be able to scale so well because of the power, but also high ground defense is uh, bottom lane. They're going to try and focus uh -oh. down Tofu, and unfortunately, we got a pause on our hands. It looks to me like Tofu's dead as they've got Skewer activating from Zai, so that should just be able to finish him off. No fairy well, fires left or anything. He's got shards. So if he comes right back and disjoints his position, I think he can Olay it. Really? I don't think you can really knock yourself to the side too much, though. Uh, he can do like a little can... bit. He, I think he, I think he's going to disjoint this. If he reacts immediately. You want to bet on it? I think... <laughs> I'm going to say no way in hell. I believe that if Zai doesn't cancel the skewer, I think Zai is just going to cancel the skewer. Okay. But if he doesn't, Tofu is going to juke it by spamming Shard just above him to push him down out mm. of the path of the skewer. I feel like you can't really move yourself like that. I, 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 maybe he could move Zai with the Shard, but I still don't think that would be enough. Anyway, Mag is really good against Dusa, right? Because she, when yeah. she attempts to go high ground, she is 
perfect target to pull her back it to tier four. Sort of goes both ways because theoretically Deuce is down to just tank the RP and, you know, kind of face check, provide optimal positioning for his supports because, you know, she can just charge up the high ground. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is that you don't really ever have the ability to itemize against RP. You know, yeah. BKB doesn't matter. Sure, you have a snowball save, but one time is all it takes for the deuce to be left isolated. All right, here, it goes. here we go. Tofu. Can you pull it off? Oh, two. Okay, he didn't have enough time to react. Oh, okay. okay. Right, sure. So much more shall soon be and Ace won't even be able to get the rebuttal kill. So, first blood for Team Secret, as uh, that was not supposed to happen with the old Medusa versus double melee matchup. They were supposed to just win the CS battle, maybe even get a kill. With Secret overperforming the lanes perhaps a bit as uh, mid is being won by the Beastmaster as well. To be fair, Zai is really good at Dota 2. Yeah, I would say all Secrets really good at dota 2. i love what nisha's doing just down the boar wow. this is uh so smart though because if he doesn't go early the boar kills the rune yeah so by just spending this yeah sure bump still gets it but he has to be at that rune for an extra 15 seconds to ensure that he does oh nice damage the app store not about charging away he's gonna charge Whoa. in he's gonna charge in excuse me oh, oh, I know. I know. the app store just takes the death then <laughs> he thought about charging earlier i was like all right yeah. to go to mid maybe he just didn't have a he didn't see an option there. My, thanks. Yeah, that is really OP about Beastmaster. He pushes the lane in with axes. Yep. So he's going to push it into you, and then every single power rune, the water rune's going to up. He's going to throw a, a, a board to one side, and, uh, and you're going to be forced to miss creeps or lose out on the rune. It's very annoying to deal with. And it's not as if you can really target the board very effectively. Nice kill up top. Easy Shredder into Cookie Stun. This is the downside of this top lane. Yes, you have some kill threat, but it's a jug. So with spin-off cooldown, if you ever get cookied as well, this Lena, you're just going to die. And yep. <laughs> and so he's just, he can't even go for it, which means it's probably Nisha's. Yep. He wants to. So he got both water runes. I don't know Dying if I... Oh, yeah, look at Nisha, man. He's just... <laughs> This is huge. This is two waves. Love that glyph usage because that's seven creeps of experience now that Storm Stormer just will not be present for. In addition, Nisha's six timing, that activates the Absorb into the game. Suddenly, one axe throw onto the Quap, he's 70% HP or so. If you actually got Matt, now you're just dead to a charge roar combination and he's already out leveled. Top tower it's gonna under. be a tough game for our boy Storm Stormer. You know what the best part is, is that they, they picked this into it. Oh, what is this? What, hap what happened there? How did I mean, he must have been charged back or something, right? It's, they both? Uh, he's gonna man fight it out, but Yapsor's more than tanky enough. What the? <laughs> How did that happen? I think he must have caught him off guard with the two-point shockwave. Typically, you'll see Mags going for the more empower-based style, but Zaya just straight up utilizing the spell damage. Yeah, easy how It's just so much lower risk, it feels, for Secret in all of their lanes. Mid, they have the advantage. Top lane, oh, we didn't get... Wait, what? What? That shouldn't be, that shouldn't be possible. Hey, there's the leaping ballerina combo. Killing Gilger once again. He was roared in tower range. He must have just misplayed and gone for a deny and just got killed in the face. And Secret's winning every lane. Yeah. Top isn't going as well as you might have hoped, but they are getting kills. This is this power of the caustic build on Sand King. And yeah, wow, the double back. skewer. But he hadn't charged yet. How do you get a he double skewer a, off? He just somehow walked up, got a really good shockwave, oh, and skewered both of them. Wow, that is... That's impressive. It's an angry secret, as you said, Kyle. They are uh, here to crush anybody who stands in their way. Go and so far, so good. We'll see, though. I mean, it is it is a deuce a lineup. Never count them out. And I like what Ace has done here. Triple Wraith ban. So going for as much early game stat as possible. Try and be strong. It's coming in. Gilger doesn't see it coming until too long. Oh, that was a nice little burrow. It's not going to stop anything, but for a second there. That was uh, a decent attempt. Hey, Zai's dead, so let's look at uh, Tofu being all nice. Butters up base, leaves him the kill. Another charge coming in now as uh, Rasmus is going to be the target of the scene. He throws strikes Ooh, nice through shot. and hits the Spirit Breaker. Nicely played. That should Burns get him out. Oh, mid lane. 
Oh, don't tell me Nisha did it again. No, again. He's got a haste He's going to chase. Oh, God, he's coming. The axes. Oh, it nails him. Nisha purposely moves himself so the axes are going to come right back towards Stormstormer even as he attempts to juke it out. Man, I don't I don't know how to value this Beastmaster here. We saw it ignored in the lower division earlier and in a couple of our, our, our CIS or our Eastern European upper division from uh, Sunday. Uh -huh. And then we see Nisha. Yo, Secret just straight up first pick it. It's mid. You have last pick as Hellbear Smashers to address it and you're getting bodied. Yeah. And I think that's uh, what's so cool about uh, Dota stuff in general, right? Storm Stormer's probably played this matchup. He took this matchup and he said, I've beat Beastmasters in the past. Quap is the answer. I dumpster him with Dagger. He's a melee hero. And Nisha is just like, nah, man, nah. You, you may uh, do everybody else, but you don't dumpster me. Oh, my gosh. Nisha does it again, killing spree just off of Quap Quill. Nisha, Nisha wasn't even at TI, uh, really? TI 8, man, where uh, the pre party they had this whole axe throwing competition. <laughs> Funny enough, I believe yeah. both Puppy and Curl made it to the finals. Nisha wasn't even there, still got the skills. These guys are savages. Let us fight! Toby. You know where he's going, trying to pull him through the. Not a bad idea. It does cancel his healing south and may still get the kills. Yapsor lines up a charge to top lane. He sees Gilgur super low. They don't even need the charge to kill Lena. Keep it going. Maybe he catches Rasmus, but no. Hey, net worth though, you know, it's not it's not terrible. The big issue is actually the XP, because Nisha is level 10. He is at 700 XP per minute. Second place is Medusa at 400. And uh, this is Dying not is good. Yo, Quap is a snowballing attack. hero. If you fall behind like this, what what are you supposed to do? And you're also pretty susceptible. You know, Nisha's just pushing the lane in. I love the purchase of the soul ring. Oh. Okay, yeah, uh, that was not good that in tier two, but the soul ring purchase means he's just spamming axes off cooldown. It looks like Yapsor is going to be caught out as a result. Smashers, Stormstormer's probably calling like, guys, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm getting absolutely obliterated in the mid lane. I need some help. This has happened to me before, and it is a little embarrassing. You know, you feel kind of sheepish. It's, uh, it's like when you spill a drink on yourself and you're like, oh, does anybody have an extra shirt? You know, you hate to be the burden, but in this case, you, you really got to get assistance. Because otherwise, Nisha just straight up wins this game by himself. He's more than halfway to his Aghanims. Well, he keeps on doing this. He keeps on stacking and farming. That hard camp from the easy camp. Pretty crazy. Nisha knows all the tricks here, man. Oh my, look at the Ancients. I don't think he could stack it again. If he clears that Ancient stack, does he just have Axe? How many is that? Three? Four? Four. It's going to be close. Dyer's mid-trade. Hard camp open? Hard camp's open too, so we can pull that over as well. Well, Brightside Ace is farming quite well. He is going for the Manta build. This is one of the heroes a lot of people theorize would benefit from the Manta change. Mm -hmm. The illusions taking less damage and in addition lasting the same duration, whether you are ranged or melee. You can argue Dusa and Luna. Uh, maybe Morphling are the three heroes that benefit the most. Are they, is he leaving it for Matsu? What a nice guy. Oh. All right, still takes the majority of it, but yeah. I have fun to for you. They're gonna make sure he dies here. The all over both of the heroes that are farming that ancient stack. Just to make sure that this guy's dead. Anybody comes close is dead as well. And hey, let's just go ahead and hit the tower too. Why not? I'm looking Nisha. Yep, of course, stacks the ancients with the boar. Dyer's top tower. No time wasted. Attack. So even though they abandoned the stack, the same value is, is gained. Is under attack. Eight stacks. Eight. Uh, man. This man got three solo kills on a quad mid lane and stacked eight and times. That should not be Here's the thing, Ice Frog. The, the thing attack. about it is that if you look at Secret historically, they get beaten by being thrown off their timings, right? Oh, the same God. way, you know, how does Tom Brady how does he get taken down when the D-line can get pressure without having to blitz? Mm. Think about how Nigma took them down the series last week. High Radiant's aggression, they throw Secret off attack. their timings. Same goes even back to TI9 Dyer's when they eliminated top Secret top. using this Alk draft that came online Dyer's way before Secret was prepared. And your response with a week of preparation is to pick the Dusa? We'll see, but you know, he is top net worth. 
but Secret are really good at min-maxing. Nisha proving it right here, hitting about Radiant 10 stacks in 12 minutes. While owning a game, Radiant's while killing the enemy mid-player. Yeah. While taking his tower, he's still able to maximize efficiency. In fact, his Aghanim Scepter is on the way. There it is. 12-10, must be a record. Radiant must be a record, and I'm sure JJ will let us know. It's not the record. 26 seconds slower, huh? Than the patch average? Oh, then the fastest. Okay. Oof. Oh, Jay's gonna, gonna stay. Mid tower might be a fight. Three minutes faster than the average. Mid lane, that's gonna be an easy kill on a puppy, but uh, also get a tower out of this. This is not too bad, but they wanna fight. They wanna fight real badly. Look at Zai. The charge is gonna start coming through. Rasmus is gonna be the target to start things off. The axes are raining in. It's I just cutting him off with the pass, carding the choke. Yep, he's gonna make sure they can't get away so easily. He's gonna skewer over to the side here, misses straight up. He's, he's gonna be forcing Stonegates here. They're actually gonna get the kill on his eye and a big scream Whoa. as well. That actually goes out with his, oh no, Ace. He thought maybe this was gonna be good, but now he's gonna be lit up by Puppy. And his damage is gonna oh, be too much for him. Oh, he no. it was a moment of weakness for Secrets, but they didn't have any damage oh, left. My and God. Stormstormer can he flick away in time? Oh, thank God. I do not want to see this poor boy die again, Tanisha. Zai, I, I feel like he's prone to do that. I can't remember who was uh, discussing it, but in one of those TI interviews, he was discussed as one of the most patient players. In this case, he made the right moves and then skewered it into nowhere and died. I feel like this happens like once a month or so. Yeah. Just a slightly questionable play. You're like almost too patient. So the right move just never materializes. And with Ags up, you do have Healing Ward as well as a threat. Although I don't think Nisha has the mana pool to potentially do Roche. Perhaps just baiting it. But 15 to six, it's still an even game. Like, yeah. This is not as bad as the kill score would look. Consider also Nisha is at his timing. Like he doesn't yeah. really get too much stronger than this for a little while. Attempts to stack the ancient camp again, but uh, we'll forgive Nisha that one transgression there as he's gonna be trying to pick up bots soon. Honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that Nisha's just having such a crazy performance, then Hellbear Smashers would be looking fantastic here, I think. Yeah. Now, Matsu also go went for this, um, the SNY into the Ags build. I can't remember who was playing last week. They did the same, going straight to Valina. Rasmus abandons him. Yapsor goes for the plus one. Burrow strike through, but they definitely got him. And if anything, Gilger, he was the one trying to uh, escape, but can't get away from Momentumma, man. Heads up play from Yapsor. Maybe they lose Gilger there if he has the TP off cooldown, but went for the plus one, saw that Misery was in vision, Erasmus was in vision, got the core kill guaranteed. Matu able to follow up, collect the extra support. Uh, but you know, gold lead is in the side of Hellbear Smash. Radiant's top tower is under yep. attack. And that's because I Medusa continues to take advantage of all the space that is available. And uh, the part of the reason he's farming so efficiently is the triple Wraith Man build. Yeah. But then we uh, remember uh, Beastmaster things. Arcane Room, Dead Roche. 15 seconds. Has the trinket as well. He's going to keep that for a while. Yeah, wait. So, you know, give, give it spell damage, one. but mana cost reduction Jeez. really bothers me. The bonus health, too. It's still oh, it one of the best tier ones. mana for the axes right now. <laughs> no cooldown. <laughs> uh, ILTW rushed uh, SMY into their game versus Secret. So, I'm a man. Uh, how do you even balance this as a mechanic, though? Like, there's no cooldown. It's either going to do enough damage to be viable or not enough. Right? Like, it, it feels tough to find that middle ground. When you play with Lena, I suppose if you nerf the base stats a bit, attack. he won't be quite as dominant in lane. The fact that a Beastmaster is able to crush a quaff kind of blows Radiant my mind, but yeah. yeah. Matu's build makes a lot of sense. Radiant's he has the Empower and the Beastmaster aura, so he can go for these fighting items without hurting his progression. Ace at some point will be strong. Gold lead Dyer's middle going back and forth, attack. but if Secret can take this tier two, they will Radiant's gain control. The Apple's dope. Trying through uh, Rasmus. Quick reaction by him with a clock in the back line. It's already dead. They're turning around trying to still deal with the Spear Breaker. They can kill him, but it takes such a long time. Now they're going to be caught. Tofu. No chance in a snowball's hell is he going to be able to get out of that one. The axes. No cooldown to him. 
Nice play set up there by Secret. They have this really nice ward near their top outpost, so they had the charge for vision, and then a easy as pie RP from Zai has the blink revealed, but he finds that kill. He'll be quite happy with that. All right, butterfly, divine rapier. Dyer's top tower Let's is go. Under attack. The butterfly makes a lot of sense. Uh, you'll be able to juke all of the pretty much soul right click damage from secret. You know, the little shred, all three cores, the little shredder. And it's also quite nice for the stats. Most benefit to wow. uh, DPS of the Manta Illusions as well. Mostly right click damage. Let's not forget she is a slow damage over time here against this Beastmaster. That's a good point. I forgot about that. <laughs> Like, Beastmaster, here's the thing is that, like, Beastmaster is the king of these long, drawn out fights. Nobody beats him in that regard. I have yet to see a Beastmaster yeah, lose that. in that exact type of team. Because it used to be physical damage on the axes. At least you could stack armor. Now he's suddenly a, an insane mixed damage mid. Okay. Well, the Omni Slash actually bounces over to the Medusa. Versus down, but they do lose the juggernaut. And Rasmus isn't dead just yet. Now he gets the first strike on the Absor. They're gonna chase after him. Nisha, though it's already cleaned up the toss on the side. Looks like Absor two for one exchange so far with Secret quickly retreating. They say, All right, you win this one, Hellbear Smashers. Very odd play from Matu there. Somewhat uncharacteristic. He just went completely YOLO and oh wow, that's a deadly enough. All right. And if they're not careful. I'll take your Beastmaster is going to chase and he's going to keep racking up uh, that axe damage. It's going to build and build and build. It's just, it's just, like he's farming so fast. Cleave plus axe spam. He's just eating creep waves. That wasn't too Mace is honestly doing his best to keep up with Beastmaster. Yeah, having been saying that sentence a little weird. That's the first epicenter I've seen her while, but that was still as fine. Did they have, they, did they just Stormstrucker wasn't ready to go for that. He blinks away, but the axes, the axes, they're always there beyond godlike for Nisha and Rasmus. He won't be getting out either. Oh, that's just straight up mistakes. Yeah. Like, secret, yeah, they're ready to respond, but that should be a dead jug. You know, there's plenty of time to get the Orchid off. Rasmus either went too soon or Strong Stormer didn't recognize the range. So he gets spin off pre Orchid. That's a uh, easy way to lose two. In a game that was looking close, you cannot afford to make mistakes like that. The benefit of Secret's line, of course, they had the charge that can come in quickly. And then Nisha, boom, bots TP. Shorter cooldown and more maneuverability. Huge advantage. When you consider Hellbear's draft, to your point, like Medusa, very slow acting. No bots to be to be spoken of for this entire Radiant side. And meanwhile, it feels like Secret's just all over the place. 15,000 damage. He is making up the Juggernaut, Magnus, and Spirit Breaker's contribution and damage in this game. An Aeon Disc, the next item. Age is gone. Or not Aeon Disc, Octarine Core. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah, man of regen talent, of course. Just, I'm just, just act spam. We don't really need to key in on Nisha anymore. The smoke move I coming mean, out we've though. We've already done it for the last 20 <laughs> minutes. It's hard <laughs> not to. It's his fault. He yeah. won't leave. Uh, Radiance he won't leave our boys uh, Helper Smashers alone. They're they're trying to smoke up and get a, a gank off here. They have a nice ward, but look at this. Secret very aware, just camping the wave. Radiance top tower. Is Epicenter almost up. We do have the mech coming in from the mag. That always feels quite bad yeah. for Sand King. Whenever the enemy team has mech or pipe, it's like, well, there goes most of my my epicenter damage. They get the charge. charge. Going after the Tusk, which uh, don't think they want to complete that. Ace really wants to keep holding this high ground. It looks like. Yeah, there's the Ags on the secret Jug. So yeah, now it's go time to hit the power spike. Jug's got his item. And uh, Aether Lens on Nisha. Everything's ready to go. They have the mech. This is a secret special. All three cores hit an item spike. Well, let's just go get a fight. Or at the very least, we're going to play some good wards. Matu draws the line. At the very least, they're going to force Hellbear Smashers back to the safety of their tier two tower. Farming their way back, Ace. 
taking what gold he can as they retreat back to their side of the map. This is the right move. You can't fight this. It's just simply not possible right now for, for the Smashers. So you mirror the movements. If you want to take bottom area secret, go for it. There's no tower there. Take our outpost back. We don't mind. We're going to do our best to keep Medusa safe and hold his hand as he continues to try and accelerate his farm. You just can't shake the feeling, you know, secret there. They're like a hungry lion searching for the jugular. One big fight, and they straight up take two racks if uh, three heroes on the Radiant side are down without buyback. Ace putting himself in the front oh. lines here. Swiss Slash from the Tumba Man just to poke to see if maybe they can get a stone gaze forced or something like that from the Medusa. Ace, though, remains pretty calm. I have Doesn't pop anything major here. The charge completing here still on to oh, Medusa. Zai. The skewer misses from Zai. The shots come in from the Snapfire, and from a distance, they're going to bring down Gilker. One support already down, and Ace having to use his stone gaze to retreat. But they can't get away Radiant's from this Beastmaster. He pursues Blink Dagger and Axe is raining in constantly. Storm Stormer. Oh, Zai. Oh, Zai. <laughs> Another screw up from him. And they're still going to catch him, baby. Yeah, so he's like, don't worry, buddy. I got him, even if it forces me to tier two. He's old. Sapphire, the healing talent comes out and actually keeps Yapsor alive. That one will land. Well done. Zai and Nisha are able to bring down old oh, two. Hey, on this immediately popping there. Zai is quite low. He's going to try and skewer away to safety here. The last couple of shots coming in. It's not quite enough. The Solar Crest helps keep him alive. And Ace is taking so much damage from these axes. He's got to retreat. But nice interception there from Rasmus. He stops and charge on through. Gives up his life to be able to bring down Yapsor. But Ace, he needs more help. But Nisha he doesn't care about the tier fours. He's in deep past him. He's just going to take him out with more axes. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, I can't, Kyle. These axes are insane. I can't not talk about the fact just, that that's just all. Look at the damage. 8,000 damage. Nearly two-thirds of his team's total output in the fight. Almost twice as much as the entire enemy team. More that? That's more than his team combined, Cap. More than his team combined. But it, almost. Oh, that's just close, yeah. Close, not close. quite, not quite. <laughs> I did some math on the fly. This even, it's, it's so absurd. I, what is this? No, we need a patch to fix this immediately. And we already we had one. We already had one. We need another patch. It's funny, Zai is just like having fun. He just, what was his his output in that in that last fight? He empowered his allies. He whipped a couple of skewers. He's like, oh, sorry guys, let's go cool down. I'll be back soon. He shock waved, but I, I I feel like that last skill didn't even need it. I feel like the axes would have killed him. This anyway. is my favorite part. Let's just like Zai. Zai's got him. Gets the Q. Pulls Don't want to waste the RP. Gets the skewer. Oh yeah. <laughs> Touchdown. Whoa. And what's funny? Yapsor even gets the bash. Right? So he could have he could have just <laughs> taken his time. <laughs> oh. Don't do it to him like that, JJ. Right, Twist in the night. Is. Rasmus in trouble. Get out. But he saved me the primal roar from downtown. Nice snowball, but uh, now I think uh, you just added oh. an extra. Day. Okay, now Rasmus does manage to blink away until. Oh God, he's here! He's coming! Nisha's here with the axes. Fortunately, he doesn't know exactly where Rasmus is he, positioned. He even did go for the Aeon disc before the Octarine because he's just so far ahead. He's like, the only way we're gonna lose a fight is if I get jumped on by this huge combo, the Sand King, the Lena com combination. Too much Dyer's magic top damage top. to survive. Well, well, ace is out by himself right now. So Yapsor, he's making the call. Don't TP in. Just take the tier three. Take the lane of air. So I'm going to make sure this guy can't TP out. They've got to kill Yapsor first. If they want to be able to TP back to safety. In fact, uh, they may not even try. Maybe they're just giving this up. They TP in now, but it's awfully late. Deals with the Hawk. Melee Barracks is about to fall. The tough man, he'll just pop the spin to finish it off. Start backing away. Skewer on in. Manage to find Gilker. The old scepter. That's only going to buy you a moment. Peace. Before you eventually die, sir. 10 to 11 with 11,000 net worth lead. Secret. 
take in one lane of barracks. Ninja is just playing his own game, own little mini game on the side, just whack a mole, throwing axes constantly. Screws him back a little bit, hits the RP. The snowball. Keep him in place, keep the axes flowing. Nice snowball backwards into the team dragon that was inside the base. They're still gonna go for it though. They charge on through. Tobu's already dead. Nice on the way that hits a lot of units here, but Nietzsche, the axes continue to build up. Nietzsche does get stone gates here. He still has a cheese to be able to work with. The cookie gives him a little hop. He turns around. Nice kick up, but now they skewered him in deeper, and that's not where they want to be. The snowball pulls him around, but Ace, he doesn't have anything left. He doesn't have enough damage to be able to deal with Secret, and that's it. It's GG. There is no way in hell. That they're gonna lift this beast master through again. Hellbear Smashers 100 percent are banning that out. Otherwise, it just it's a two-up. I mean, just 16-09 on Nisha. They first pick it. We're picking Beastmaster. It's going mid. You last pick, counter it. It does not succeed. And you straight up just get axed to death. I think he's gonna end with possibly 